shark fin. What is it? The act of removing fins from sharks and discarding the rest of the shark. The shark is still often alive when tossed back into the ocean, or it will drown because it cannot swim, or it will bleed to death and eventually be eaten by other fish. Although mainly focused in Asia, it is still legal in the U.S., as the trade is only banned in 10 states, California included. With 40 other U.S. states allowing this, there is still room to trade around the U.S. Now that you have some background information on this topic, I will propose to you my stance on it, that the banning of shark finning will positively affect our ecosystems. One way it will positively affect us is that shark finning is overall harmful to our environment. It is first obviously harmful to sharks. I'll start with this statistic from National Geographic, as of 2013, that 100 million sharks are killed annually. 73 of those million are for their fins, and sharks only kill six people globally. This is clearly is not a fair fight for sharks, and they even claim that that was a conservative estimate, and it could be a number as high as 273 million. This report also includes that 4.9% of sharks can be killed each year to maintain population stability. However, 6.4 to 7.9% of sharks are killed annually, more than 1.5% of what can be stable, and is only increasing. To put into perspective and to add to the magnitude of this statistic, toilets injured 43,000 Americans, along with buckets and pails injuring almost 11,000 Americans in 1996. Sharks only injured 13. Sharks are also uniquely vulnerable because they take long periods to mature and produce only a few young over their lifetimes, which makes it hard for them to catch up to the rate of them being killed for their fins. According to the Smithsonian, many species of sharks are currently in danger to shark due to shark finning, including the scalloped hammerhead, which is endangered, and the smooth hammerhead, which is vulnerable. This does not even include the 70 other shark species that are at risk of extinction. Because this business is heavily fueled by the economy, one basking shark pectoral fin can sell for as much as $50,000, even though the species is vulnerable. And the same goes for the whale shark, the largest shark species, in which one pectoral fin can sell for $20,000, even though it's still endangered. Secondly, this affects the other fish in our oceans as well. Without sharks, there will be an imbalance in the ecosystem, and there are already facts to prove this. The Census of Marine Life in 2018 determined that cow nose rays are extremely abundant in the waters along the mid-Atlantic coast of the U.S. Researchers suggest that the population is increasing due to the decline in sharks that prey on these rays. As the population of these rays increases, obviously their demand for their diet of clams, oysters, and scallops has also risen and is harmful to the demand of fisheries. This is clearly a domino effect and has harmful effects on all of the species in our oceans. Shark finning is harmful to humans as well. Since sharks have such a high position on the food chain, they consume huge amounts of toxins that have accumulated in their prey. One of these toxins is mercury, and just one bowl of shark fin soup contains the most toxic and volatile form of it. According to Business Insider, one soup serving is 17% more than the EPA's recommended amount. Matthew Castle from the same news website claims that the majority of the taste comes from the chicken chicken stock in the broth, and that the fin is tasteless. The inclusion of the shark fin is basically a part of a thousand-year-old Chinese tradition rather than the flavor or the non-existent benefits from eating the soup. People who follow this tradition believe that the shark finning ban is culturally discriminatory. However, this issue is bigger than you or me or an ancient culture, but about the existence of a, the existence of a powerful creature. Besides how harmful shark finning is to our environment, Sharks also help to maintain a health, healthy ocean. They manage our oceans by eliminating weak, sick, and diseased species, removing them from the ecosystem. Therefore, there are healthier fish for consumption, and it is healthier for us as well. According to Oceana, since they maintain the species below them in the food chain, they serve as an indicator for ocean health. Due to the fact that the shark population is decreasing, that shows that the ocean's health is, will decline as well. Due to the fact, oh, sorry. this is because they keep the balance with competitors, which helps to ensure species diversity. The loss of sharks has led to the decline in coral reefs, seagrass beds, and the loss of commercial fisheries. By taking sharks out of the coral reef ecosystem, large predatory fish such as groupers increase and feed on the herbivores. With the loss of herbivores, algae expands and the coral can no longer compete. 
In simpler terms, this affects the survival of the reef system. In conclusion, the ban of the act of shark finning will positively affect our ecosystems for many reasons that I have just listed. We need to educate ourselves on sharks in the ocean because that is what they call home. We are only visitors. If we continue to kill this vital species out of fear or so that their flavorless fins can be chopped up in soup, then you are letting selfishness destroy our oceans. Sharks deserve the same protections on their fins as rhinos and elephants have on being killed for their tusks and horns. The only predator these creatures have is us, so it is time to be scared for sharks and not scared of, a, of them. Thank you. All right, well, as hap has happened in a couple of other speeches, we have a clear statement of the proposition, but not really a good preview of what the supporting structure is going to be. But in the body of the speech, there is a pretty good signpost on each of those points as you get to it. And there's a diversity of information on each of those individual points. On the first point, uh, the thing that I thought was most useful piece of information was the uh, number of sharks that are killed, the number that are killed for their fins, and the percentage of sharks that can be safely taken and still sustain the population. And the, and the statistic that suggests that we are over that percentage. That, I thought, was the most convincing piece of information to suggest that a problem really does exist here. The basis of those statistics, I think, might be a place that there could be some questions for the refutation speaker, because how do we estimate what the population of the sharks are? That's going to be uh, something that is, you know, you know, where there's going to be some uncertainty. So the difference between how many sharks we're taking and how many can be taken safely to sustain the population seems like it's a relatively small difference and that's really where all of this argument uh, ends up focusing on because if we can sustain the sharks at the present levels in their numbers by taking the a, a particular amount then the rest of this all kind of seems uh, less important. Uh, the other points though about the need for sharks, I don't think there's a lot of dispute about how, you know, how they fit into the ecosystem and the contributions that they make in a variety of ways. Um, I think there is a little bit of assumption that there are going to be harmful consequences because of fewer sharks. Uh, the examples that you have concerning um, rays and the way they might impact fisheries, there's not really any information on the impact on fisheries. There is some data suggesting that we have more rays as a consequence, but it's a, a big inference to then say that there's going to be a problem to the fisheries. By the way, I don't know, you know, we got the same question here that we had with the number of sharks. Do we have enough uh, other animals in the fisheries to sustain the additional rays? That's an assumption that needs to be uh, documented a little bit to make this argument more convincing. And then, um, <clears throat> The, uh, you know, the notion that it's potentially harmful to humans uh, because of the way that it's, you know, you know it, it clears, uh, you know, toxins in the uh, food chain. That's a, a little bit thin. The notion that there's a, cons a consequence to coral reefs. There's uh, a link there that's explained how significant that is. I don't know how big a contribution the sharks make to maintaining the coral reefs. We don't know, but there is some assumption that there is a connection there, and I think that that's pretty reasonable at this point. Uh, presentation, there's a lot of reading, not a lot of audience contact. Uh, there's Because you've got so much information that you're presenting, sometimes there's a tendency to... Um, I think focus on the data instead of the audience. At the end, there's kind of an emotional plea uh, equivocating uh, sharks with uh, rhinos and elephants, and um, we'll give you a little bit of that sort of thing at the end. It's okay, because most of the speech wasn't that way. All right, thank you.